Looking for a classic Hollywood flick with a mix of action and drama? Then you'll want to check out The Last Hard Men. This 1976 movie boasts a stellar cast and a gripping storyline that'll keep you on the edge of your seat. But here's the kicker, there are plenty of funny, shocking, and sad facts about this film that'll leave you wanting more. So, keep watching to uncover the juicy details. Now, let me ask you this, what classic Hollywood actor in this movie was your favorite? Or perhaps, out of the many roles in this film, which one was your favorite? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie in the comments below. Your stories and memories are valuable to us. Let's keep the conversation going. The Last Hard Men is a 1976 film that takes viewers on a thrilling journey into the Wild West. Set against the backdrop of the Arizona desert, the movie follows a retired lawman, Sam Burgade, as he seeks revenge against a notorious outlaw, Zach Provo, who has kidnapped his daughter. The plot is filled with intense action sequences as Burgade and his ragtag group of allies pursue Provo across the harsh terrain. The main characters include Sam Burgade, a tough and determined former sheriff played by Charlton Heston, and Zach Provo, the cunning and ruthless outlaw portrayed by James Coburn. Alongside them are various supporting characters, including Burgade's daughter, Susan, and a young gunslinger named Billy, who joined Burgade in his quest for justice. The Last Hard Men received critical acclaim for its gripping storyline, memorable performances, and stunning cinematography. It captured the essence of the Wild West era while delivering a compelling narrative that kept audiences on the edge of their seats. The film's intense action sequences and dramatic showdowns earned it a lasting place in the annals of classic Western cinema. The Last Hard Men was not the first choice for its lead actor. Initially, he was offered the role of Alexander the Great in a different movie, but turned it down to portray Moses in another film. The role eventually went to Richard Burton. In her younger years, she was mentored by Doris Day, the former singer and actress. Their friendship endured for over five decades until Day passed away in 2019. The Last Hard Men is honored on a postage stamp in the Legends of Hollywood series released in 2014. The stamp features a picture of the lead actor from a famous scene in Ben-Hur. The movie The Last Hard Men, released by 20th Century Fox, became famous with its exciting tagline, One of them is going to die hard. This catchy phrase later inspired the successful Die Hard action movie series. Quentin Tarantino, a big fan, especially admired one of the actors in it, often calling him the best actor alive. Also, another actor from this movie left a strong impression in cinema, starring in two films recognized by the Library of Congress for their cultural importance, The Right Stuff and Hoosiers. It's amazing to see how one film can influence both pop culture and movie history, leaving a long-lasting impact that still interests people today. All this shows how a well-made movie and the talented people behind it can leave a lasting impression. The Last Hard Men has a famous cast and an interesting backstory. Sam Peckinpah, a well-known director, wanted Charlton Heston for the Osterman weekend. But the producers changed Peckinpah's plans. Heston has acted in many important movies recognized by the Library of Congress. Some of these movies are The Ten Commandments, Touch of Evil, Ben-Hur, Planet of the Apes, and King of Filmed Record. Montgomery to Memphis. Heston was thorough in his work. For example, when he played Cardinal Richelieu in The Three Musketeers and its sequel, he did a lot of research. This helped him portray the character as not purely evil, but more morally complicated. Heston's dedication to his roles shows how serious he was about acting. The Last Hard Man, set in 99 Arizona, marks the end of the wild American Western frontier era. Directed by William Wyler, it's known for its notable script elements. Gore Vidal, who also worked on Ben-Hur, introduced a subtext implying a past romantic relationship between characters Messala and Ben-Hur. While initially hesitant, Wyler agreed to incorporate the subtext with conditions. Charlton Heston, denying Vidal's claim, later admitted to Vidal's significant contribution to the final shooting script. The film received the first Charlton Heston Award from the American Film Institute in 2003. The second recipient was Heston's close friend Jack Valenti in 2004. The Last Hard Men, a film from 1976, was shot in the style of Sam Peckinpah, as per TV Guide. It marked the debut cinema appearance of actor Larry Wilcox. Charlton Heston, who starred in the movie, resides in a Hollywood mansion filled with memorabilia from his career. He has lived there with his wife for over 40 years. 
The mansion, built by Heston's father after his Oscar win for Ben-Hur, features items like a Roman figurine with a whip, brass ring knockers from the House of Herset, and paintings depicting Heston in various iconic roles. The house offers scenic views of canyons from most windows. Charlton Heston, known for his long career in acting, had a close friendship with Brock Peters. They worked together in plays and movies from the 1940s to the 1970s. They even planned a mixed-race version of Romeo and Juliet in 1946, but it didn't happen because they didn't have enough money. While filming Boxcar Bertha in 1972, Heston gave Martin Scorsese the book of The Last Temptation of Christ. This shows that Heston liked interesting stories. Heston acted in two important movies with Steve McQueen and Charles Bronson, both directed by John Sturgis. The Magnificent Seven and The Great Escape were big parts of his career, showing his impact in Western and war movies. In short, Charlton Heston had close connections with people he worked with, like Brock Peters and Martin Scorsese. His roles with Steve McQueen and Charles Bronson were also important. All of this adds up to his significant influence in the film industry. In the 1976 movie, The Last Hard Men, a significant encounter around 1960 left a lasting impression on one of its key figures. During this time, he crossed paths with Toshiro Mifune, expressing deep admiration for the Japanese star. He went as far as claiming that if Mifune spoke English, he could have been the greatest star in the world. Their connection extended beyond the film industry, as the two actors exchanged Christmas cards from their initial meeting until Mifune's demise. Apart from his involvement in The Last Hard Men, this individual showcased his various talents in filmmaking. In 1995, he took on multiple roles in a children's video titled The Little CHP. In this production, he produced, directed, wrote, and starred, presenting a story centered around two young boys aspiring to become CHP motor officers. However, not all parts of his career were without controversy. In an unrelated incident, he refused permission for scenes from the agony and the ecstasy to be used in the documentary The Celluloid Closet. Defending his decision, he asserted that extensive research into Michelangelo's life had been conducted, vehemently denying claims that the painter was gay. In conclusion, The Last Hard Men is just one aspect of his diverse career. His admiration for Toshiro Mifune, involvement in various film projects, and stance on historical accuracy in film contribute to the complexity of his legacy. In 1976, The Last Hard Men came out with a curious backstory between the lead actress and her ex-boyfriend. They met on the set of Drowning on Dry Land in 1999 and were together until 2009 with a break in Tulium 5 when she had a child, Nabeen Joshua. The lead actor, Heston, known for his tough roles, once supported gun control but later became the president of the NRA and opposed it. Apart from acting, Heston had legal trouble with neighbors in 2005 over property damage. There was a lawsuit seeking one $2 million in compensation and punitive damages. Heston's lawyer explained that he owned part of the hillside where the damage happened, while the neighbors owned the rest. 